choices. Now there's now there's a thought. <sighs> I was thinking I might want to add a little black to it, but now I'm thinking I might just want to stick with just white or just black. One of the two. Let's do white in this one. This is the new white, which is a lot more fluid. Uh, and I did not have the trouble mixing it that I that I've been having. Now, one technique when you're doing this is you kind of you tend to do it from the side. Um, it just creates a more pleasing effect in the cup. I'm going to leave the white cap off because I'm going to use white in between each layer. So I may as well. Okay, there's the magenta. Next, we'll use purple. I'm going to try and get in more of this since I'm not going to put a base coat down. I'm going to need more paint. Already behaving a little oddly, and I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna pass judgment on it. I feel like it's kind of going in the cup a little weird. Hard to explain why. It's not what I expected. Did I sheet call these up or did I just move them over? my favorite color metallic teal now this is the one when I, I shook it up and took the cap off it spat at me so I'm going to carefully take that off there I'm just going to use a little of that I think well maybe a little more we don't have much darks in here now that I think about it maybe the darker color would be good a little of the green oh hey Dan you don't remember me shaking them? I'll go ahead then real quick. We just used them yesterday, so they should be good, but just in case. I was telling everyone my theory, which is mine, that the reason that white paint broke so funny was that I, I laid down the, the puddle of white, poured into the puddle, which is standard, classic technique, but I think it um, maybe my paint compos either my paint composition or the fact it was so cold cause that weird breaking. So this time instead of that, I'm just going to mix the white into the cup. Now see, look at now it's doing something different. Stuff's so bizarre. When I first start putting the colors in, see they kind of all mushed and now they're forming these rings. So they're they're doing bizarre things on their own. So it'll be interesting to see what we end up with then. Now this one's my new one. I just I just assembled this this morning. It's quite a pretty boy. That's quite a pretty yellow. It looks like a egg yolk egg yolk yellow. <laughs> oh, we're almost to the top on this. So way more paint than yesterday, but that's because the white is mixed in instead of uh, on the bottom. Okay, red. end with the alizarin. Oh, the alizarin sort of dove into a deep dive down there. I didn't end up putting any black in this. I'll put a little indigo in here at the end. Just for kicks. All right, now I'm going to take just a minute and move these paints out of the way because otherwise when I start tilting the canvas, they'll, be, they'll get in my way. You know they will, and I'll be banging, they'll be falling over everything. Knock this down a little bit, hey. Let me just move these offside, and then we'll see what we've got. Oh, before I get started, Dan, I, I want to show you that painting from yesterday because it actually came out much nicer um, than what I was afraid it would. We'll run over and get that. The sort of pastel one, I think, is looking pretty good, actually. Let me move that cup. Look, 
don't you think it came out pretty? I'm thinking I'll just define the trees a little more and then put in the snowflakes. Actually, it's it's exactly the same as yesterday's. It's all the rainbow colors. Believe it or not. It's almost every color I've got. But the, the main difference is, is that the white is integrated into it instead of done as a pile. Okay. Now we'll get our practice canvas here. It is, yes, really. You can see it on that first one. You can see that we've got pretty much every every color going there known to man. But this break, this white breaking is so weird. So that's, I think it's because I poured on top of the pool of white. Shouldn't have done that. But it might be the way my paint, my, my paint pour is. My uh, composition, my particular pour paint. All right. Oh, should we do the ring pour again, or do you think we should do a petal pour this time? This doesn't much matter. Tend to get a little better color separation on the the ring pour, but uh, I'm thinking we just did that. Maybe the petal pour might be better. What do I feel like doing this? Uh, it's not that big. Oh, maybe we'll do the waterfall ring pour. I haven't done one of those for a while. Now for that, I need a little thing for it to sit on. So, maybe a little more than that. In a waterfall pour, you'll use gravity a bit, a little bit. Get this a little higher. And raise the edge of the canvas. Let me turn that over so I don't get paint anywhere. And maybe move this. I haven't done one of these um, in ages. You were actually uh, bought my last uh, waterfall ring pour. Um, and it now is, I'm sure, impressively displayed in his home. Let's do another one. Let me get behind here. So we'll start at the top. And see what <laughs> boy it looks like I have a lot of paint I'm gonna be doing that other canvas boop, boop. I'll try and do very slowly here because we've got that gravity thing going as well but we'll see if that fixes that problem with that white breaking so funny Now, unfortunately for this, I'm going to have to stare at the canvas, so I can't read your comments for just a minute. But as soon as we get the paint on there, I'll stop and read them. I might even do more than one. I think I might. I think I might do more than one ring pour on this because of the way it's uh, traveling down there. Let's try that. Let's do more than one. Let's get a couple of them going. That should make for some interesting things. I'm surprised there's just so much green and purple again. A little pet oh, that's a pretty one. Let's do three petals instead of one. All right, actually, I'm not going to. Now, I only used half the paint. I didn't, but that looks like so much paint to me. I can't imagine I need that other. Let's just see here. So we'll we'll get another canvas ready for that rest of that paint, unless I decide I need it in this one. Well, it's early days, but I'm not seeing initially much of that that weird breakage we had yesterday. I'm not seeing that. It looks like it's breaking the more the way I would have thought it would. Oh, well, 
that's okay. Just did something a little different than what I was thinking, but it wasn't bad. It just it just kind of startled me there for a sec. It's all right. I guess the advantage to this is by having these multiple rings, if I need it, I can just do another ring. Oops, I want to drip on my chair too much. I, I, all, all the furniture and everything in here is pretty much trashed, but I don't want to get fresh paint on there then sit in it. Even though my pants are trashed as well, it still feels icky. <laughs> so I'd rather not do that. Now the green, green is breaking a little weird, but not too bad still. Got that last little corner. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you, little corner. All right, it needs a little help. That's okay. All right, now we've just got this last little corner to get done here. Wow, that it's fascinating though, I have to tell you guys. Hopefully we've got enough paint for this last corner. Come on. We can do it. You can get to that corner. It's starting to drip, so I'm a little bit concerned, but I'm gonna try and hold it together. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Blenny. Let's try and get, I'm just trying to get this last little bit. You guys can see where the problem is here. Let's try and bring that down. Try and get that last little corner done. We can do it. Oops, I hit the, I hit the wire, but I hit it on the side, so it's okay. Wow. Well, there's a thing, huh? Look, we, look, we did a thing, huh? I did. I did indeed. I, I have whole, a whole different type of paint, and I also have paint running down my arm here, so I'm trying to get that off there. And I said it, it just feels icky. It feels kind of slimy and icky and weird. You know, I think I'm just going to leave that. I don't think I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave it in abstract. It's very unusual, and I like it. I don't often just leave mine as they come off the pour, and I should do it more often. There's a little white spot there that we don't want. That one corner. Let's do that. Let's do whatever it is. Let's love what we did without having to mess with it anymore. <laughs> we can decide later if we want to put something else on it, but I, I kind of like it. You know what I should do though, real quick? I will put the heat gun on it. I can see some uh, some bubbles on there. You know, it gave it a slightly more interesting design than just the one straight pour would have done. Let's see if we can pop some of these bubbles. Raise some pop bubbles. I don't know if you saw that, but just a big old spray when I did that. And the problem is, if you don't pop them right away, um, and they pop too late, the paint won't um, fold back into it, and you'll end up with little pits in your painting. Um, not optimal. Not something you want to, uh, <laughs> that's hard to make that sound like an experience. 